a tiny animal came into the North American floodplains around 100 million years ago. It was a fascinating dinosaur that had no idea how much it would influence paleontology. Deinonychus was the name of the species. Most people are aware of it due to its popularity, but few truly comprehend how magnificent it is. Its bones were discovered in the early 1930s, but naturalist John Ostrom didn't give it the name Deinonychus, which means awful claw, until 1969. The name is derived from the long talon on its foot. The discovery of Deinonychus was significant not only because of its distinctive claw, but also because it altered people's perceptions about dinosaurs in general. Many people assumed dinosaurs were slow, unintelligent, and ponderous before Deinonychus. When Deinonychus was discovered to be a swift, smart, and energetic hunter, many people began to reconsider dinosaurs. Even now, when there are so many more dinosaurs to learn about, Deinonychus still draws attention due to its uniqueness. It's related to the Velociraptor and other well-known theropods. It belongs to the theropod family Dromaeosauridae. It was a Dromaeosaurid of ordinary size, neither the largest nor the smallest. Fully mature specimens were around 3.4 meters 11 feet and 2 inches long and 0.87 meters 2.9 feet tall at the hip. Though there is some variation in these measurements, nobody can agree on how much it weighed. Some believe it was light, weighing around 73 kilograms 161 pounds, while others believe it could have weighed up to 100 kilos 220 pounds. It had a lovely shape in either scenario, and its bones were hollow enough to let it move rapidly and easily, but perhaps not as swiftly as one might have expected when it was discovered. Ashram believed it would have been lightning fast, but this was before a whole leg bone was discovered. When one was discovered, it led to an unexpected discovery. The leg's length and structure revealed that estimations of its speed were likely too high. Ashram changed his mind and claimed that the dinosaur wasn't sluggish, but it wasn't much faster than other dinosaurs in the vicinity, and it was certainly slower than birds that can't fly now. However, this did not mean that the Deinonychus legs were worthless, as it could still move around on them. They also had the creature's most infamous feature, a monstrous claw with a sickle-shaped talon on the second toe that could have been up to 5 inches 13 centimeters long. The Deinonychus' slow speed was also influenced by the size of its talon. The claw is a huge part of its fame, yet even after much research, no one can agree on how to use it. The majority of the degree was utilized for hunting, but how is debatable. One issue is that the shape and curvature of various specimens differ dramatically, and no one knows why. This makes determining what the degree was used for in the beginning more difficult. The Deinonychus was said to attack and kill animals by kicking them and cutting them deeply with its large foot claw. Some speculated that it was powerful enough to kill a ceratopsian. Since then, this has mainly been disproven, and opinions concerning the claw have evolved. According to one emerging theory, instead of cutting, the claw would penetrate the prey, killing it. However, other paleontologists were skeptical because a simulation using a pig carcass and a robotic talon revealed that it couldn't cut, slash, or penetrate to any considerable extent. Some speculated that the claws were actually designed for tree climbing. However, a fresh study published in 2011 revealed that its talon could be employed in an entirely different way. It could be used to pin. In this situation, the Deinonychus would use its agility to pounce on top of an animal and use its talon to hold it down while seizing it with its large hands, which possessed three sharp claws of their own. Despite the lack of obvious skin impressions, some paleontologists believe the feathers support the pinning theory. Almost everyone agrees that the Deinonychus had feathers, and that the ones on its arms were most likely very long and may have assisted it in fighting. The skeleton apparently had a long tail that was possibly flexible and could bend from side to side. Many people believe that the Deinonychus could have utilized its tail to keep itself steady while hunting. It would kill its target by biting it to death once it was on top of it. 
People used to believe that the Diononicus bite was weak, and that it would compensate by using its shaws like a saw. Paleontologists discovered Diononicus tooth imprints on dinosaur bones, which changed their minds. This demonstrated that the Diononicus could bite hard enough to penetrate bone, and current estimates indicate that it could bite harder than a hyena. Also, if this purchasing power didn't demonstrate Diononicus's quick wit, it was fortunate that it had good eyesight. Studies on its skull revealed that it most likely had good binocular vision, allowing it to spot possible prey even amid dense foliage. Furthermore, some believe it was a pack hunter. This is due to the discovery of multiple Diononicus skeletons near the bones of Titanosaurus, an ornithopod that was too large for a strong Diononicus to kill as an adult. An adult Anodontosaurus and five Diononicus were discovered at one location. Another location had six Denontosaurus bones and one Diononicus. There were also numerous Diononicus teeth near both sites. This caused people to believe that the Diononicus hunted in groups. Another piece of evidence supporting this theory is the discovery of footprints in tracks that depict a group moving together in a coordinated fashion. Others, however, believe that it was not a pack hunter and that it fed more like a Komodo dragon. Komodo dragons are mostly solitary hunters, although they will crowd around recently killed creatures and feed in a frenzy, which can occasionally be harmful to the dragons. This is significant because certain Diononicus discovered near these Thanatosaurus are lacking body parts that correspond to those devoured during Komodo dragon feasts. Some believe that the Diononicus did not hunt in organized groups but rather in a lethal feeding frenzy. However, if it did not hunt in groups, it begs the question of how many Thanatosaurus died, as many of those discovered near Diononicus were adults. Some speculate that they were killed by the area's largest predator, an Acricant Hoserus, rather than Deanonychus, or that they died of another cause. It's possible that the Deanonychus was just scavenging, but paleontologists are very certain that they were responsible for the deaths at least some of the time. There was no other evident injury observed on the Tenentosaurus or Acricant Hoserus, although there were many other dinosaurs in the region. Between 115 and 108 million years ago, the Diononychus flourished in a region of North America teeming with dinosaurs. Even though there were other dinosaurs around, these are the ones that most people associate with Dionychus. Dionychus bones discovered in Montana, Utah, and Wyoming demonstrate that the Dionychus ruled over a vast portion of what is now the United States at the time. Oklahoma and possibly Maryland as well. These lands were primarily made up of floodplains and swampy areas in the early Cretaceous, in the area where the Dionychus would have hunted for its prey for millions of years. There were also subtropical forests, deltas, and lagoons. Because of how effectively this chromosaur performed, it appears that there were quite a few of them. By hunting different creatures according to their age, the Dionychus was able to lessen competition among its own kind. This was great news for the Dionychus, but it was bad news for the other animals because it meant they had to be extra cautious around the hazardous bandits. In conclusion, Dionychus was a terrifying and highly intelligent predator that roamed the earth millions of years ago. With its deadly claws, lightning fast speed, and cooperative hunting behavior, it was a true apex predator of its time. Thanks for joining us on this journey to discover this fascinating dinosaur, and we hope you enjoyed learning about Dionychus. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell icon for more interesting videos. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.